So I'm Chris Gebhardt. I'm uh, going to talk to you today a little bit about our cloud volume service. Um, just give you kind of an introduction to uh, this solution. Uh, but really what I want to talk about is more about, uh, about ONTAP and data management. And one of the, the benefits of, of having one single operating system across on-premises resources with our all-flash or our converged infrastructure solutions or hybrid solutions is that they're all managed the same way. And so we also have software-defined versions of, of our ONTAP software, which is our ONTAP Select, which is run on top of vSphere and uh, can be deployed in multiple different, um, different hardware. Um, and near cloud, which is customer purchase a storage, purchases a storage array, places it co-located next to a, a, data store, uh, a data center, an AWS or Azure data center, using Direct Connect or Express Route to be able to connect from the uh, AWS resources to that NPS, which we call Net at Private Storage storage system and be able to get the, you know, have data sovereignty and the performance from an all flash system sitting next to the cloud. And then our cloud volumes on tap, uh, formerly it was called uh, cloud on tap. Um, that is a software defined version of on tap that runs as a storage controller in Amazon or Azure. And it is managed identically to how they would manage a all flash FAS or a, a rotational hybrid system. And the benefit of this is that regardless of how our customers choose to consume storage, they manage it in the same way. Right? So it really simplifies on the operations. And, and that's, I think, the, one of the big things that we're hearing from our customers is, I want to go to the cloud. I want to um, use cloud resources. I don't want to be in the data center business. I want to be able to manage you know, my resources that I do have to have on-prem the same way in the cloud. I don't want to have to, to take my VMs and convert them into you know, AMIs and use them in EC2. It's a complex, convoluted process that is, doesn't allow the flexibility to be able to move different workloads dynamically between the resources where they need them. So uh, this solution, the, you know, today, together with, with uh, ONTAP and, and uh, VMware Cloud on AWS is really giving customers the ability to manage their, their private cloud resources in the public cloud through the same tool chain, same tool sets, same procedures and process. So I think I'm really excited about what we're doing here. So I'm going to go a little bit more into the differences between, you know, because I mentioned this is an ONTAP cloud volumes, or excuse me, cloud volume service. Um, we're going to talk about that. But I, I think we need to distinguish the fact that we have ver many different versions of, of ONTAP and um, some that we manage, some that our customers can manage. And so first talking about cloud volumes ONTAP, right? Again, it's that software defined, I go to the marketplace, I spin up an ONTAP instance, I you know, do all the volume creations and the things that I would do on premises, set up my, you know, my, my uh, applications, my snapshot policies, all the different things that you would normally do in an on-premises uh, instance, you do that in Amazon or Azure. Customers would then replicate the data from on-prem into VMware, cl uh, into uh, cloud volumes on tap, and then use the many different Amazon services to be able to attach their, you know, NFS unstructured data, what have you. Uh, or iSCSI or, or SMB-based um, storage uh, to their, their VMs. And then we have the, the cloud volume service. And this is a new service that we have introduced uh, within the past six months or so. And this is a, very much like uh, VMware Cloud on AWS. It's a NetApp managed service where we have hardware and, and, and software depending upon which cloud that we are deploying um, next to these particular clouds. And we then have created portals and automation. I know you, Tech Field Day has done a, a, a full cloud volumes uh, service presentation. So I encourage you to go look at that um, for all the details about it. But basically, the customer goes provision storage <clears throat> through a web portal. It's not the same UI as they use with ONTAP. Uh, it's not the same UI as uh, cloud volumes on tap or, or on premises. Um, but you tell how much you want, you tell what service level, you, you can pay per year, pay per month, uh, different uh, ways of consuming it, but you get an NFS mount point, you get an SMB share, right? It's, it's a really, really simple way of, of being able to 
request storage and get storage, just like you want with the cloud. It's not a complex setup. No, you know, assigning IP addresses and understanding um, all the details that you may need to know with an ONTAP cloud, uh, cloud volumes ONTAP uh, instance. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're working alongside of VMware and with VMware to be able to uh, give customers more choices when it comes to um, how they operate in a VMware cloud environment. Um, we, we hear customers coming and saying, we need, you know, we want to scale storage and compute independently. We want to have file access and we want a data store because we want to be able to use our replication that we currently use with ONTAP, which is SnapMirror, to replicate between my on-premises resource now and the cloud versus having to move data and do migrations. And so this first example is, is when a customer decides to use on, uh, cloud volumes on tap. They create a volume, they present that, they first create the, the on tap cloud instance in their own VPC. They create a volume, they export that volume to the VMC VPC. The VMware hosts then attach via an ENI to the customer's VPC and mount that data store. We can also, through that same ENI interface, we can also attach from the guests being able to connect each individual guest based on their requirements, be able to attach to volumes, whether it be NFS or SIFS or iSCSI, <coughs> from the guests themselves. <clears throat> the next method is, and I mentioned it before, is that NPS method. <laughs> Customer says, I need to maintain and know where my data is at all times. I, I, having it in the cloud is, is too risky. I need to maintain control over it. I need to know where my data is, know my, where my keys are for encryption, know who can access it and who can't. And with that is where we would put a storage controller, a customer would put a storage controller in a data center co-located next to AWS, Azure, et cetera, and then through Direct Connect or Express Route, connect as a data store or as guest file uh, services or, or iSCSI um, to the guest. So two different ways of consuming storage, but managing it both in the, the traditional manner in which you would manage an, a resource on-premises. And then the cloud volume service. Customer creates a, 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 an account, says I want 100 terabytes, I want a petabyte of storage, doesn't matter. It's dynamically provisioned to the customer after the initial setup. And we've already done, you know, during that setup, the, the underlying plumbing to make sure that uh, we can get to the VMware VPC when they set up their VPC um, to the customer's VPC. Um, that connection's made. Present a data store, an NFS data store, to the, v the vSphere environment, and as well as being able to consume that those NFS and SMB shares from the guests themselves. So three different ways of of consuming storage in a VMware cloud on AWS uh, environment. And so let's go a little bit into the VMware Cloud on AWS service, right? It is built on ONTAP. It's built on our platform we've had for 25 years. It's built on an all flash uh, the, platform. The, the NetApp Cloud Volume service, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. What did I say? VMware Cloud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I get confused. <laughs> I talk enough about it where it's, you yeah. know. All good. I just wanted to, I, I was going to let you go, but I didn't want anyone listening to yeah, get Yeah, VMware confused. Cloud on AWS. I'm sorry. It's not. It is Cloud Volume service. Um, so there's a lot of different, uh, <clears throat> we originally built this service because, you know, not necessarily with VMware Cloud on AWS in mind. It was, uh, we knew that there was a need for customers to be able to um, purchase large amounts of high performing storage um, and, and be able to do things like take snapshots and replicate um, value added type of things on top of um, just storing files in an NFS environment. And so uh, we, we built this to address the, those customers that needed petabyte scale type of, of storage system, of, of storage in the cloud uh, in multiple different regions. Um, and, and you know we, we realized that there was a, a gap in the market that EFS was good, but we could do some things differently because that's what we do. We're, we're, we're about data management, data and data management. And so um, we're evolving this service over time and adding additional features and functionalities uh, to be able to give customers exactly what they need. Um, it is NFS v3, v4, and SMB today 
uh, unlike N uh, EFS, which is NFS v4 only, mm -hmm. we know that all of our VMware customers, or most of them, are using NFS v3. There are some that require NFS v4. Well, VMware, yeah. NFS v4 support up to if standard. Yeah. <laughs> anybody would. Then we could use it. True. True. Um, we support. <laughs> Okay, we support encryption at rest. Um, uh, be, we have the ability, to, it says clone workspaces. It's not using our core uh, cloning capability today. Um, it is using, a, it, it basically is, we can copy the data um, and present it to the, as, as another share. So if somebody's working in a uh, you know, test dev type environment and need multiple copies of the data, we're able to do that. And so we're iterating to include a lot of the um, core features and functions that we have within ONTAP to be able to uh, accelerate those types of things and provide uh, customers with, you know, capacity quickly based on existing storage. Uh, and cross-region replica, uh, replication and, and backup recovery. You say that says coming soon. There are a couple things that we may touch on that are either uh, just been announced or, or will be coming. Um, but being able to leverage, uh, being able to replicate from, uh, you know, a uh, uh, cloud volume service in one region to another, um, but we do not have the capability to replicate today from an on-premises using our SnapMare technology to the cloud volume service. Is the cloud volumes consumed as a service or where you, I, I want, you know, I want to share, I want, I want a path? Or am I basically getting a file and then I'm managing it out and I'm managing the back end side of it? No, so it's, it is truly service. And we'll show you, uh, we'll go through the provisioning process and how um, you, you, you know, we'll walk you through that whole process. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, you request 100, you know, terabytes and seconds later it, it, it is, you know, provisions that 100 terabytes mm -hmm. within our service. So it's kind of, it's like, it's similar-ish to S3 and all the other yeah, ones. It's, Basically, it's, I want a bucket for me to do stuff. I don't have to manage the bucket. No, you guys are taking care of it. Exactly. That. We're taking care of the management, life cycle management from an ONTAP perspective. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, and that's why these two services are so similar with mm -hmm. VMware Cloud, right? Um, they manage the service. They can iterate and upgrade through vSphere, you know, customers won't even know. They'll bring in and out and hosts to be able to, to migrate um, up to new versions. This is the same way that ONTAP, mm -hmm. uh, that our cloud volume service works, is that, you know, we may iterate through sto different storage controller versions or ONTAP versions, and the customers will never know, right? Mm -hmm. We have non-disruptive uh, upgrade capabilities to be able to seamlessly do it. So um, it should never be, uh, uh, it, it is a, um, exactly how you want, in the, what you need in the cloud, what's required, mm -hmm. right? So <clears throat> how we provision this, and we'll show you in the demo um, the details of provisioning out, but we have three different service levels, and we basically, and, and of course there are limits to these, you can't get, you know, uh, uh, a zettabyte of, of bandwidth at zero latency, right? Um, but basically it is, uh, we have three different service levels based on throughput, right? We understand that the cloud is variable and so there is latency that is within the networking and so, you know, there is a certain expectation when you're, when you're uh, you know, purchasing storage that you have a, um, uh, you know, a, a good experience and, and a fairly low latency. We've seen AWS regions vary dependent upon um, you know, whether it's on the east or the west or, or around the world, there is some variability. So we can see as good as, you know, sub millisecond latencies. And sometimes you can see, you know, a couple of five, ten milliseconds latencies. But it's really dependent upon, um, upon the region you're in and, and where you are. And so we're not, uh, we're not guaranteeing latency here, but we're saying that, you know, you can get up to 4.5 gigabytes of, of throughput uh, per second. Um, and, and actually, that the, there's an AWS limit that is limiting here. Um, and the limit of, of, of 4.5 gigabytes per uh, instance is, is for Amazon. Our service is up to 3.5 gigabytes of bandwidth uh, per uh, instance today. So any one customer can get up to 3.5. Um, and it's all based on the networking um, on the back end. And these limitations are consistent across Azure, AWS, and GCP? So, no, I won't say that. 
We can I say, will say the AWS part, that one's a stop. Yes, to AWS. Azure, Azure the cloud volume service, um, we are working with Azure, Google, and AWS independently. Mm -hmm. And so they have different networking constructs and you know models of deployment, and some were working in, in, in in their data centers, some were working, uh, you know, in Equinix and, and partnering with them. Um, so each one is different, and so the limits are. These are really focused on AWS. Um, we can, you know, I, I can. Yeah, but like any internal documentation. I can kind of provide. Thing. Yeah, I don't. I know have like the Jupyter networking and Google is, you know, head and shoulders above others because of their ability to talk to themselves. Yeah. basically. Because that's mostly what Google does. Talking to themselves. Yeah, I don't have those details, and I, I, I can definitely get you those if you're interested. I, I would love that, actually, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, and so this is all, again, can be changed on the fly. Um, mm -hmm. And this is about the performance, right? Number of kilobytes per gigabyte quoted. And quotas, again, something that can be changed on, uh, you know, dynamically between a gig and a terabyte, and that's per volume. So as a, as a customer, you can come in through your portal, provision multiple 100 terabyte volumes, right? So, and this is a artificial limit, as Ziki uh, from our cloud volumes te uh, team stated. It's a artificial limit that we have imposed because 100 terabytes is a lot of capacity. When we start to see requests for more, we would definitely consider changing that. Mm -hmm. It's not an on-tap limit, it's a service limit. Mm -hmm. And we could uh, change these on the fly too. So we'll show these this in our demo yeah. as well. And from a consumption model standpoint, if uh, I'm, I'm requested, you know, 50 terabytes, and I'm using 50 terabytes, but if I jack it up to 100, am I being I'm being paying for 100, even if I'm only using 50? Correct. Is that, okay. Yes, perfect. it is based on what you have currently quoted and allocated. Okay. But we do have a full API. So mm -hmm. right, if has you you know if you want to monitor it and change, you can monitor it and change that uh, dynamically. As the as your consumption goes up, because right? I think of other service things like, oh my God, our, our CPU used exploded and our bill was massive. Your bill will be consistent based upon what your expectations are and what you quoted out, basically. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect.